Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chapter 4, the first chapter towards derivatives. I might have mentioned this a bunch of times, either in my videos or in person. Um, Cal 1, if there's only one thing that you will remember about Calculus 1, is computing derivatives. Like Derivatives are the most important thing that we're going to learn in Calculus 1. Thankfully, they're not the most difficult thing to learn. Like I would say that limits are way more intense, you know, in, in terms of terminology, cases, and how to handle them, like all those uh, indeterminate forms. It's it's crazy. And we're not done with limits. We're going to come back with limits after learning about derivatives, actually. So there's, of course, connection between the two concepts. But if, you had to, if I had to rank, you know, the importance of the tools that we're learning, number one, of course, derivatives. Number two, um, limits that we've already done. And of course, number three, uh, still one of my favorite okay, sign tables. Um, so in this section, in this um, chapter four, uh, we're first going to introduce the, um, uh, the definition of the derivative as a visual notion. I always try to make an effort to uh, illustrate what's going on, but of course the goal eventually will be to compute okay, derivatives of functions. But it's good to have like a nice background. So first, the informal definition of the derivative, like what does it mean okay, to be uh, computing a derivative of a function at one point? So first definition, if you start with a function f of x at a point a inside the domain of your function, intuitively, the derivative of f of x at a denoted by f prime of a, is the slope of the tangent line of f of x at x equal a. Whoa, a lot of information here. So visually here, I already have for you, I've drawn my function f of x in blue. I've picked a point a in the domain of my function. Of course, here my function is defined everywhere. And of course, I've also illustrated like the, the output at a. So what is the um, derivative of f of x at x equal a? Well, first, with a, what you do is you look at the point on the graph where the x value is a and the y value is um, f of a. So, And I'm going to call that point throughout my, my, uh, my chapter. I'm going to call that point uh, p. So here we go. Boom. Okay, so here's my point on the graph, okay, um, on the graph f of x. And then what we do, so we have that starting point, the tangent line. Okay, so what you do is you're just going to draw at that point a line that is tangent to the function at that point. So what does it mean, tangent, uh, intuitively speaking? So here I'm going to draw it for you first. So here we go. Boom. Okay, so that's what we're looking at here. So that's the tangent line and the slope of that line. Okay, the slope of that line uh, is what we call the tangent, uh, the derivative of f of x at x equal a, and the notation for it is f prime. So that's the slope that we're trying to find and uh, so to define and then to uh, compute. So here the notion of, um, of, um, of uh, sorry, the notion of, of the tangent line uh, can be visualized in a bunch of ways. So the first way is to think about that tangent line as being this line that only touches the function at that point. So there's only one. If you were like going to spank that function with that that magenta line, the spank that function at p, there's only one way to get that that stick on that graph. Another way to think about it, you could think about the function f of x as being like some sort of road. That you're um, that you're riding on a car or a bike or whatever you're into, and then as you're let's say you're you're going from left to right, suppose that at the point P, suppose that road is icy and you start to lose grip, then your trajectory is going to be a straight line, and the line you're going to follow is going to be the magenta line. So here, uh, so that's more like a physics approach of understanding the tangent of a function. Again, here. This is just an intuitive definition. We're not really making anything precise here. We're just trying to use our intuition of what could be a tangent line for a function at a specific point. And the slope of that line is what we call the derivative of f of x at x equal a. And we denote that slope by f prime of a. And that prime 
symbol is really like an homage to, you know, okay, like it's like F tangent. So that prime notation, it's kind of the line on F, the tangent line on F. So this is where the notation comes from. Okay, but again, even if this idea is supposed to be initially very visual, so very intuitive, how can we define and then compute this formally? And that's the goal of this chapter, to find a way to compute this formally. All right, so the next section, we're going to talk about average, average rate of change. Uh, so again, remember the goal is to find a way to define and compute the slope of the tangent line at that point P, okay? So um, that F prime of A. Uh, remark here, so we're talking about lines here, slope of lines. Uh, it's absolutely crucial to understand that normally in order to define a line, what we need is we need two points. So initially here, we only have one point. And of course, we're just using our intuition and the fact that we have the graph visually to get that tangent line. But of course, in practice, you won't have the graph. You will just have an equation. Yes, you can plug in your point A inside your equation, uh, but then you're going to get just one output and then just get one point. And if you have only one point, you cannot draw like a, a one or a unique line that goes through that point. You need something else. So here, we need two distinct points in order to define a line. So what we do, because we know that tangent line follows the graph somehow, so follows the equation f of x, is what we, what we do is we pick a second point. And that second point is going to be very, very, very close to that initial point. Of course, in my pictures, they're going to be a bit more far apart so that we can see what's going on. But what we do is we pick a neighbor of A, and that neighbor we call it A plus H, where H is a very small quantity, okay, not equal to zero, but it's very close to zero. So that number is very, very close. A plus H is very, very close. And then as soon as you have a value of X close to A, you compute the output at A plus H, and you get F of A plus H as the Y value. And this gives you a second point, and I'm calling that point Q. So here I have a graph in, in, uh, in black, I have my point A, F of A, my point P, and then I have my neighboring point, uh, A plus H, and then F of A plus H, and that point I call it Q. And then as soon as I have two points, I can draw this blue line, so I can compute here the slope of the secant line. So the first thing we're going to do is compute the slope of the secant line. So here, this is what we want first, poof, the slope of the secant line. And we're going to call that slope M, P, Q. Oh, forgot the Q here. Uh, hello, Q is like, Q is like a Quebecer. It's always, uh, he prend son temps, he prend son temps. Okay, come on, little Quebec, here we go. Okay, so MPQ. So we want, the, so we want, and computing the slope of that secant line is not difficult. MPQ is just delta Y over delta X. So Y1, uh, Y2 minus Y1 over X1 minus, sorry, over X2 minus X1. And then if you simplify things, there's nothing to simplify at the numerator, but at the denominator, a plus h minus h minus a gives you h, so it simplifies nicely. So we know how to compute the slope at, as soon as you have two points, like this is not this is not a big deal. Okay, so delta y over delta x gives you the slope of that blue line. But of course, what do we want here? Ultimately, we want the slope of the magenta line. So we want the slope of the tangent line. So let me just illustrate that again. So here, copy. So boom, this is this is the one we want eventually, the slope of the tangent line F prime at A. So that's the one we want. But the good thing here, and this is a very, very powerful remark here, and it's very, very important to understand that because this will be seeding everything that we're going to do next. Um, that, that slope in blue is very close to the slope of the tangent line. So that remark here, very, very important. So the slope of the secant line, MPQ, is very close to the slope of the tangent line of F of X at X equal A or F prime at A. And of course, this is more and more true if that H is close to zero. The closer H is going to be to zero, the closer this secant line is going to be to that ultimate goal, which is finding that slope of the uh, tangent line of F of x at x equal a. So um, so again here, initially the tangent line with one point, we don't know what to do, but we know how to kind of approximate that that uh, that slope by picking a, another point nearby and then just using the formula delta y over delta q to get 
something very close to what we were looking for. And that slope of the secant line, of course, I prefer to talk about slopes. I like geometry, obviously. So for me, like I like to represent things visually. But this is also known that quantity, that slope PQ, is also known as the average rate of change of f of x over the interval a, a plus h, if h is a positive, or between a plus h and a if h is negative. Of course, here on my picture, my h is positive, but you can compute slope of secant line by choosing a neighboring point q on the right side, like my picture, or on the left side. So it does not really matter. h can be uh, strictly positive or strictly negative. So let's just do an example first to, um, to illustrate what we can do with average slopes or average rate of change, sorry. All right, let's do an example. Let's start with the function x squared, and let's compute the average rates of change at x equal 1 with the following h's. So 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, and their negative counterparts, minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.01, and minus 0 0.001. So we're going to compute a bunch of q's and just compute a bunch of slopes of secant line. Okay, so. I've already, for you here, made a little table with all the h's, and then I'm going to compute first uh, the neighboring point. So here my a value is one, so a plus h is one plus h. Um, so we're going to compute the corresponding x, the neighboring x for one, and then we're going to compute outputs, and then we're going to compute the slope of the secant line uh, between p and q. So the last column here, maybe I should label it just to make it clearer but the last column is really M, whoa, okay, wait, wait. So the last column is really just M, P, Q here. Um, so here we go. So if you evaluate at, I'm going to do this in red. So what is one plus 0 0.1? So my neighboring X is 1.1. If you compute 1.1 squared, so what's the output here? You're going to get 1.21. And then uh, if you compute delta y over delta x, so if you go, I'll need a little bit smaller. So if you go 1.22, 1.21, minus one, that's my delta y over delta x or over h uh, directly, which is 0 0.1, you're going to get 2.1. I just want to, before I do the other ones, I just want to illustrate visually what's going on here. So for you, I'm so nice, so for you, I drew that function x squared, I am at one. So here we go, poof. Okay, so here visually what's going on um, for that function here, uh, x squared. So what are we computing? Well, we're computing the following. So we have the function x squared, I'm starting at one. So my point P, because one squared is one, is one, one. And then I'm picking a, a neighbor for one, which is 1.1 in the case when h is 0 0.1. And then I'm computing the output, I get 1.21. So that second point is the point q. And then when I, uh, I link these two points, I get a line and the slope of that line is 2.1. And that's the slope of the secant line, okay? So at 2.1. And then of course, you can do this for all the other values. So I will just give you the values here, you can, uh, you can, of course, uh, practice on your own to make sure you understand where it comes from. So if I compute all the H's, actually, I'll just do them, all of them together. So here, copy, here we go, boom. Okay, so those are all the values for the rest. Okay, for, wait a minute, come on, Kayla, Kayla, away, <laughs> so sorry. So copy, so boom, okay, here are all the other values. So I'll just read one of them. So when h is, for example, minus 0 0.01, then the neighboring point is 0 0.99, the output there is 0 0.9801, and the slope of the secant line between the point 11 and the point 0 0.99 and 0 0.9801 is 1.99. Okay, so uh, anyways, but make sure you compute all of those on your own. Okay, so they're not that difficult, but it's important that you understand where they come from. And one small remark here, uh, we can already kind of sense a pattern. The closer h is to zero, the better, the closer the slope of the secant line is going to be to the slope of the tangent line. When you look at those numbers, like let's, let's look at h getting closer to zero 
uh, from the right side, so 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001. My slopes of my secant lines are 2.1, 2.01, 2.001. Hmm, this sounds like what? This sounds like a numerical method where these slopes are getting closer and closer to two. And it's same thing here for negative h's. As they get closer to zero, I see that my slopes are getting closer to two. Again, 1.9, 1.99, 1.999. These slopes are getting closer to two. So, and this is exactly what should be seeding the intuition here. Like, how do we go from these approximations, these slopes of tangent lines, sorry, of secant lines to the slope of the tangent line? Well, we need to push these H's. We need to push it to zero. We cannot choose zero initially, okay, because then I would just get a zero over zero type deal. But how do we go from, you know, getting closer to zero to that? value, well, we're going to use our favorite friend, okay, the limit. Okay, so that's what we'll see in the next section. All right, that's it for that video. Bye-bye.